Yesterday I was scrolling through Instagram when I came across a post from Sacha Sestik about his new Paragon Brewer. It looked cool, but I thought, how would I make that? What's happening here is that the coffee is being brewed over a frozen orb in order to chill the coffee to preserve flavor and aroma. In 2021, Hugh Kelly used this technique to help win the World Barista Championship. And before that, Berg Wu chilled his portafilters in ice to achieve essentially the same goal and winning the WBC in 2017. This is something that has been dubbed extract chilling and has been pioneered by Dr. Chahan Yuretsian of the Coffee Excellence Center at the Zurich University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. Some of you may be familiar with this technique because it's similar to the Japanese cold brew method where you brew hot coffee normally while replacing half of the water volume with ice. This method helps to preserve the volatile compounds yielded from hot brewed coffee that you would otherwise lose in long form cold brew method. In a 2022 article from Perfect Daily Grind, Dr. Yuretsian said that in some cases, up to 40% more volatile compounds can be preserved. Well, that sounds interesting. As you can see, the Paragon is a handsome device that is designed to sit on a scale while holding your pour over brewer, the golden orb, your serving vessel, and another arm designed to capture excess drips from the orb after you've used it. It's available now in Australia for 159 Australian dollars, but I've cobbled together a setup that approximates the Paragon and should deliver similar results to give it a go. What you'll need, a brewing stand, something that is high enough to give you clearance for everything below. I had this nine inch Bunsen burner stand sitting around our cupping room. They're about 15 bucks online, or you can go with what's called a retort stand for that breaking bad kind of look. Pour over brewer. I've got a number of different models of pour overs lying around, but I chose the V60 because it's what many people have and it looks cool and clear. Chilling orbs. These are one and a half inch metal spheres that I picked up from William Sonoma. They're not as sexy as the gold ones with the Paragon, but they should do the trick. I found similar ones that should work essentially the same on Amazon for 15 bucks. Mesh strainer. This is to hold the orb during the brew cycle and will sit on top of the brewing vessel. This particular strainer was just sitting in the kitchen. I have no idea where I got it, but I'll put a link below to a similar set that cost about 10 bucks. Brewing vessel. I'm using the V01 from Mad Monk Tea, but you can use any vessel you prefer. You can even use your mug. As a side note, I really do like this V01 for brewing tea, especially in a commercial environment. It's easy to use and quick and easy to clean, and we've been using them for about seven years now. Scale. The Paragon is designed to sit atop a scale like the Akaya. I don't have those kinds of fancy and fashionable scales. Instead, I use cheap and easy scales, like this one from AWS that I've been using since 2011. This one costs about 40 bucks. The problem with this setup is that it's a bit high and we want to place the orb as close to the bottom of the filter point as we can. So we need to raise the setup. To do this, I'm using an old cigar box, but anything that you can find will do. The coffee. For today's brew, I've decided to use the Ethio Hamasho from Gimisa Coffee in Seoul, South Korea. Gimisa is owned by one of my dear friends, In Young Song, who gave me this bag during our recent trip to Riyadh while judging the Saudi Arabian Barista Championship. The coffee is produced by Daye Bensa at his Hamasho washing station in South Central Ethiopia. With elevations reaching 2300 meters, the coffee is dense and smaller in size. Washed for 72 hours and dried on raised beds for 14 to 18 days, the coffee is sweet and complex with medium light body and delicious notes of mandarin and shirinui oranges. Brewing. As you can see, I've got our poor man's Paragon setup and next to it, I've got a standard Hario V60 setup. We're gonna be brewing pretty much identical pours. We will be using our usual brew recipe of two grams of coffee per finished ounce, meaning that to make a 12 ounce serving, we're going to be using 24 grams of coffee. Now there will be some variance because of the difference in setups and the way each scale measures the weight. For the poor man's Paragon, the scale is only measuring the brewed coffee coming into the vessel. So we're gonna stop at 12 ounces or 340 grams. In the standard V60, the entire setup is sitting atop the scale. We're gonna be pouring a total of 350 grams or about 13 ounces of water. According to what I've read, the best results seem to come when you do the chill extraction for 20 to 30% of the brew. Since we're planning on a 340 gram brew, we'll split the difference at 25%, which means that we will remove the orb once we've reached 85 grams. Here's another problem. The orb and the strainer together weigh just over 60 grams. We're gonna to have to compensate when removing them by recalculating our target weight, which will now be 280 grams. With our recipe, the initial pour for the bloom is 85 grams, so the extract chill phase will also be our bloom phase. Like I said in Sasa's video, he notes adjusting the orb as close to the point of the coffee filter as possible. I wondered how critical this is. So I reached out to Dr. Yuretsi and asking him if there's much of a difference the larger the gap you go. He wrote back, the larger the gap, the larger the post-extraction losses of volatiles. 
And since we're trying to retain as many volatiles as possible, we want to keep the gap to a very minimum. As I was preparing for this shoot, I read somewhere that the Paragon's gold balls were filled with liquid. I surmise that the liquid might be something similar to what's inside the zero ice cream scoopers that prevents ice cream from freezing to the surface. It kind of makes sense because it doesn't seem like there's any icing on the orb as the brew progresses. Of course, that could be just because it's hot. However, Dr. Uretzian says that the liquid allows higher heat capacity, meaning that the ball takes longer to heat up and stays cold longer when the hot coffee flows over it. I was also wondering why 20%? If 20% is good, then 100% must be even better, right? Dr. Uretzian went further to say that you can leave the orb longer, but the longer it stays, the more it cools down, and that the first part of the extract has more aroma than the rest, meaning that it's much more important at this phase. Setting up the brew. For today's brew, I'm using Hario V60 Zero Two paper filters. These are made in Japan, and I understand there are a couple different V60 filters made by Hario, so I'm showing you the ones I'm using today. Because we want to get the orb as close to the point of the paper filter, I'm fitting the filter as low into the funnel as I can. And I'm using a little pre-rinsing of the filter to make sure the filter paper is all set. Even though we already know that you don't need to pre-rinse, bleach paper filters. The manufacturer recommends freezing the orbs for at least three hours. I've left these in our commercial freezer overnight so they can be as cold as possible. One thing about using the orbs is that you want to utilize them as quickly as possible before the chill dissipates. Ideally, you want to use them within 10 minutes of departing the freezer. Okay, now that we've got it all set up, let's get to brewing. The brew. The actual brewing of the coffee started well enough. Of course, my brand new bear timer started acting up, so I ended up having to brew in the blind without an active timer. I will be using the camera time code to calculate the total brew time. Using the orb changes the workflow and it will take some getting used to. The desire to keep the orb as close to the filter causes a little problems with clearances, making it a bit of a jumble when removing the orb after the chill phase. If you use the Paragon, that's not really an issue. The method I used was basically to keep the water at the same level throughout the brew. Nothing too fancy. Just basic, simple brewing. For the standard V60, brew time ended once the 350 milliliters of water had flowed through the filter. And on the chill extract brew, brew time ended once 340 milliliters total of coffee had flowed into the brewing vessel. Total brew time for the standard V60 was 5 minutes, 15 seconds. Total brew time for the chill extraction was 6 minutes, 10 seconds with the chill extraction phase ending at 1 minute 51 seconds with 86.7 grams. This turned out to be a chill extraction of 31%. I think both had relatively long brew times and I prefer my pour over brews not to exceed 4 minutes. In future brews I would compensate for this by using a slightly coarser grind than the medium I used for this video. But what really matters to anyone drinking coffee is taste. And how did these taste? Now if we just look here straight on, just visually, the normally brewed coffee looks a little bit darker in the brew than our orb coffee. I don't know what that means, but... So let's have our standard coffee. There's definitely a weightiness to it. There's also... There's a heavierness. There's a thickness to it. The mandarin orange citrusy notes that I've had in the previous tastings of this coffee are not as apparent. They're not as forward. So the weights are different. Like this one is really thick and a little more viscous, a little bit heavier in the body. This one is lighter, it's juicier, a little bit more vibrant. The standard brew, I guess the best way for me to describe it is it's chewy, it's a thicker, it's, it's more viscous, it's a little bit more like fuller. Whereas the extract chilled, it does have a lot more lively, it's brighter, it's fruitier, it's more vibrant, like it's definitely more expressive. There's definitely a much more stronger expression of the coffee. That's not to say the standard brew isn't good. It is a good brew, but it's definitely heavier. Gosh, compared to the extract chill, it's kind of weighed down by its own, you know, prettiness. It's just very interesting to try it. There's still a nice amount of that mandarin, shudanui orange character, that citrusiness in this cup. It's just, it's just not as apparent until it cools down like just now because I think it's just weightier, it's more heavy. Yeah, there's definitely a vibrancy difference with the extract chill. I can't, I can't deny that. That's really quite an interesting experience to see. Now, what does this mean for you and coffee? Like, should you run out and buy the Paragon? I mean, certainly it's a nice looking device. I mean, it looks, 
pretty sexy. The golden balls are very sexy. And who doesn't like gold balls? But if you want to experiment with it at home, you can set this up for a relatively small amount of money. The key really is to get the whiskey orbs and have those frozen because it, that's the whole point of it all. Is it worth exploring? I think so. It's quite interesting the difference between these two. Will it work? Yeah, I think it will give you some interesting results that are probably worthwhile exploring, especially if you're really into coffee. For a coffee professional in a professional environment, you're going to have to have multiple balls and the storage for them as well as the systems to handle them. Is it worth exploring? Yes, I do think it is worth exploring after trying it. There it is, there's my thoughts. The extract chilling, kind of interesting. Yeah, give it a try, see what you think. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you've tried it, if you hate it, if you love it, whatever you think about it. Questions or suggestions for future videos, let me know that as well. Thanks, and uh, see you next time.